here's one tonight it's on jealousy uh, uh, how does envy act uh, envy resents people that have nice things they try to destroy their attitude is if i can't have it then you can't have it and so they destroy by sometimes by gossip or you'll see them scratch a nice car with their keys uh Envy is the same thing as the scripture that says, thou shalt not covet. You want what somebody else has and you don't have it. So uh, now the person that is jealous, the difference between envy and jealous before I get started, jealousy are the people that have those nice things, the nice car, the nice house, but they're always looking out for a rival. They're looking behind their back. They don't want anybody to catch up with them. And uh, uh, my brother was invited to go on somebody's boat years ago. And he called, my brother called me up. He says, we were out on this boating trip and the other guys had better bo bo boats than the guy I was with. So he pulled his boat out of the, out of the, uh, the lake and went and bought a better boat. Just, he said another 40,000 on top of the trade-in just to outdo the others. So jealousy is always looking behind him. They have to be number one. But in the Bible, the word jealousy and envy are interchangeable words. So sometimes you just have to read the context to figure it out. So I'm going to do the Bible study from that, from that beginning right there. So here's some things about jealousy. Number one. Jealousy destroys others. It destroys homes. It destroys relationships. It destroys unity in a church. Um, it's kind of like uh, the guy that was, he was fishing off of the uh, Oregon, up here off of or in Oregon, and he caught a crab and he put it in a box and it was fine until he put other crabs in that box and any crab that tried to climb its way, out, its, its way out of the box, the other crabs would grab onto it. It could not, it didn't want anybody to get ahead of it. Or So uh, jealousy destroys others, just like those crabs do in the box. So jealousy is not so visible. It's, you know, like putting a needle in your arm, drugs, or hitting someone, or road rage. Uh but it's deadly. Watch what this scripture says. Proverbs 14 and 30 says, envy is rottenness to the bones. It's like a cancer. It's, it's poison. That's what that scripture is saying. So jealousy has no ethics, no rules. There's no boundaries to it. Those are scary people. If I detect it, I'm out of there. I'm just because they, they will never leave you alone no matter what. Uh, Song of Solomon 8 and 6. Song of Solomon 8 and 6 says, jealousy is cruel as the grave. That's how dangerous jealousy is. And uh, you might all remember these cheerleaders were, uh, these two cheerleaders, teenagers were competing for the last spot. And the other, the mother of one of the cheerleaders killed the rival cheerleader. Because that's how jealousy works. It's, it destroys others. And the people, the people were, they were jealous of Moses and Aaron in Psalms 106 and 16. Psalms 106 and verse 16. And it caused division. Um, Saul was jealous of David in 1 Samuel 18. And it caused division. Uh, Joseph's brothers were jealous of him. You all know that in Genesis 37, and that caused division in the family. Um, the religious world was jealous of Paul. In Acts 13, he had to leave town. They were out to kill him. Uh, the religious priests were jealous of Jesus in Mark 15, in Mark chapter 15. So it all ends up in destruction, jealousy does. Proverbs 6 and 34, Proverbs 6 and 34, for jealousy is the rage of a man. He will not spare. He will not spare anything. So number one, 
the number one point on jealousy is uh, it just destroys others. Here's number two. Jealousy destroys you. It doesn't just destroy the people around you, but it automat eventually it will destroy you. And, and you guys remember Cain was jealous of his own brother's offering and he kills his brother and then he becomes a fugitive for life. He doesn't have any resting place. He's just on the run. And Genesis 4 says, in Genesis 4, Cain says, my, punish it, my punishment is more than I could bear. So it, just, it ends up destroying you, destroying the people around you. Uh, Saul's jealousy caused him to take his own life in the end. And so I was re remembering, a, a, they were talking about a marathon. And at the end of the race, the second place runner, he watched everybody glorify the first place runner. Uh, the reporters were there. Um, they put a crown on him. They, uh, they, he sat there and watched. The second place runner watched them, watched the number one guy make a speech. And, and they even built a statue uptown for the number one first place guy in the marathon. And this guy would go to bed and he was envious and it was eating him up. He would wake up in the middle of the night. Finally, he went uptown in the dark and he started chiseling that statue of the first place runner. Every night he would go there and he would just take a little bit more out of that statue. And one night he went and he took another little piece out and the statue fell forward and it fell on him and it crushed him to death. And my, the whole point is envy eventually, it destroys you. It destroys your spirit. It destroys your health. It's just not worth it. So number one, jealous, jealousy destroys the other people around you. And then it destroys you. Here's the third point about jealousy. Jealousy compares itself to others. That's real big right there. It's jealousy starts comparing itself to others. And so jealous, I think when a person has jealousy, he has to choose between two situations right here. One is a person that's envious and jealous. They either choose a superior complex. That is those kind of people that always say, I'm better than them. My job is better. My house is better. My car is better. Um, I, they have to feel self-important and it produces pride. And really people that are like that, it's really a self-defense because they feel inferior. So they have to put themselves out as they're better than you. So you have to choose that route if you're proud or you choose an inferior complex. And that is, I'm no good. I'm not as smart. I'm not worthy. I'm not all those kind of feelings. It's, it's a feelings of not measuring up. So when we compare ourselves to others, it produces either a superior complex, which produces pride, or an inferior. And so pride starts to compare itself. And Peter compared himself to John. You remember that in John 21? That's, a, that's something to write down right there. John 21, this is what Peter said to Jesus. What, what about John? You know, the disciples were like little kids in the, in the Gospels. What about John? And G, watch what Jesus says. He says, what, what is that to you? That's what he said to Peter. What is that to you? In other words, it's none of your business. Stop comparing yourself. And so Saul got in trouble because he compared himself to David's accomplishments. There it is right there. You start comparing yourself to other people, their accomplishments and and so number 16 says, in number 16, some of the leaders started to compare, the, compare, compare their authority to Moses' authority, and they got in trouble. So uh, jealousy starts comparing, and that's the danger of it. 2 Corinthians 10 and 12, 2 Corinthians 10 and 12, it says not to compare yourself. Don't compare yourself. 2 Corinthians 10 and 12. 
Um, so I, I think when when people start comparing themselves, that there's a big temptation to inflate your success. And we have to start comparing and competing and exaggerating numbers and all that kind of stuff. But here's the thing is, if you're going to compare yourself, compare yourself to what you were yesterday. Are you grown in, in patience and long suffering? And is the fruits of the spirit grown in your life? That's what you compare yourself to. I was talking to one of the kids. Uh, he just got the Holy Ghost and he kind of messed. He was messing up just a little 13 year old. And I, and I said, I, I thought you got the Holy Ghost. And he says, I did, but the, I don't have the fruits of the Spirit yet. So I thought that was kind of funny. But if you're going to compare yourself, compare yourself to the fruits of the Spirit. Here's the, the fourth thing about jealousy. Jealousy causes anger towards God. I have friends that are mad at God. So when you're jealous and envious of others, you, it causes you to be angry at God. You're, you're saying stuff like this. Why are you blessing them, Lord? Uh, you favor them more than me? Uh, I guess God just doesn't like me. Uh, so it opens the door up to the devil when people do that. James 3, verse 14 and 15. James chapter 3, verse 14 and 15 it says, envy is, here it is, devilish. It opens the door up because now we're mad at God and God and the devil starts jumping in right there. He's like, all right, I like that. So Saul was jealous at David, remember that? And an evil spirit came to him. That's in 1 Samuel 18 and 10. 1 Samuel 18 and 10. So for jealousy is the rage of a man, he, can, he will not spare. Here's the fifth thing, fifth thing about jealousy. Jealousy acts ir, irrational. Jealousy, it acts irrational. You know, Saul was throwing javelins at David. That's just, that's crazy stuff. And, and he, say, he sent an army out to try to kill David. That's just irrational. Jealousy is irrational. The prodigal son would, uh, the one of the sons would not celebrate the other son that made a comeback. He backslid and he came back home. He was so jealous of his brother, he would not even celebrate. If I had a brother that was out in the world, he came in the church, I'd be celebrating. But he could, jealousy just can't, it's foolishness. Joseph's brothers were so jealous of, of, of him, they threw him in a pit. So you could see how jealousy acts. It just, you, you just, you could see it on the job. You could see it when people get jealous. They just, foolishness comes out of them. Do you guys remember, some of you might remember the Virginia Tech guy that killed 33 people at that university. And when he was done, he, in his notes, he put down this. I hate rich people. So he he so he was jealous, so he kills 33 people. So jealousy acts irrational. Number six, this is what we have so far. Number one, jealousy destroys others. Jealousy destroys you. Number three, jealousy compares. Number four, jealousy causes anger. Number five, jealousy acts irrational. Here's number six. Jealousy justifies itself. Because, you know, I don't hear people saying jealousy. I don't hear anybody saying I'm jealous or envious, unless they're kind of joking around. But jealousy, uh, they, they have to, when they're jealous of what you have, they, they have to justify them attacking you before they can attack you. They'll say stuff like, well, who does he think he is? Who does she think she is driving that kind of car? Or she got a promotion. She thinks she's all that or he's all that. So jealousy is always looking for faults to, to justify their slander. You know, before they're going to start whispering gossip and tearing you down, they have to justify it first. So Daniel, in Daniel chapter 6, he was promoted over all the governors. And the other governors got jealous, 
and they started looking they started looking for skeleton and skeletons in Daniel's closet they couldn't find any so they came up with a scheme all because of jealousy so jealousy is always on the hunt to justify their slander here's number 7 number 7 jealousy runs in the same profession and i noticed this i i i got that thought i was sitting in a doctor's office one time in the 1980s and i remembered the doctor was running down other doctors and then when i talked to other doctors the other doctors the doctors run down doctors lawyers run down lawyers um quarterbacks don't like quarterbacks the most of the jealousy is in the same profession singers in a choir they'll run each other down or when we, we, we get into the church that's how it is it's just so you know normally a musician is not jealous of an athlete it's just not going to happen so the religious people are the ones who came against the apostles in the book of acts there was seven riots in the book of acts and five of them was by religious people attacking religious people get that so uh king herod king herod attacked jesus because he was called a king a king was trying to kill a king so the cheerleaders were trying to kill the cheerleader in texas that i told you about so it runs in the same profession uh now let me just give you a couple notes on overcoming jealousy cuz it's not worth it uh number 1 be thankful for what god has given you i think everybody would just uh no one has the whole package uh being thankful i'll tell you what happens being thankful for the gifts that god gave you causes you to focus on those gifts and perfect it and not compare yourself to any nobody's nobody's alike on earth we all have different fingerprints just focus on the strengths and that you have And, and you know if you hang around somebody that has a lot of talent sooner or later you're going to find the flaws they have too they could hide it in a quick conversation that you have in church or anywhere else but you start hanging around those kind of people and even the real smart people sometimes they're the dumbest if you know what i mean einstein was so smart he couldn't tie his own shoes have you ever noticed those real smart people they they can't figure out the simple things in life I didn't mean to say all that but anyways let's go to the next one I think let me break the uh here we're still on this one 1 Corinthians 12 says that it compares the church in 1 Corinthians 12 it compares the church to a body it says one's a foot one's a hand one's a ear one's no one has it all it's just dividing god divides all these talents out and so i think sometimes people always look for the person they compare themselves to the guy that's in the spotlight they start comparing and so uh i think understanding what god how god made you your talents it, it helps you to get through those kind of things here's a second thing to get through help with jealousy is uh rejoice when other people's are blessed are promoted are are they're good in math or music rejoice with those kind of people because it takes away envy even if you have to fake it a little bit at first if you're really struggling with that kind of stuff romans 12 and 15 romans 12 and 15 it says rejoice with them that do rejoice or that scripture could say celebrate those that are are being promoted are they're good at something rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep feel bad when somebody doesn't get that promotion and you know human nature does the opposite they weep when somebody's rejoicing and they rejoice when somebody's weeping they that's just the human nature is to do that kind of stuff so i think here's the third thing that helps in jealousy is i always try to remember this just remember people that are blessed in certain areas there's a lot of responsibilities with with blessings you could name anything out there if somebody's a ceo and they're working 16 hours a day and you're sitting there going man that guy's got a good paycheck good target 
well, you know what? He's working 16 hours a day. He probably, he, everybody's after his job. He's a C, everybody's jealous of him. He's got a lot of pressure on him. I don't know if you guys remember this guy. He used to come on the radio. He retired years ago, Dr. Dina Dell. And I used to listen to him uh, about health issues and stuff. But his last time on the radio was the best. And he said, I wish I never became a doctor because I, when you become a doctor, you're $300,000 in a hole in debt. Uh, you work 16 hours a day. You don't really have a family, a wife, a kids. You don't see them. You just come home and sleep, go back to work 16 hours a day. The pressure's on you. And if you drive a nice car, nobody likes you. He says, I wish I just would have been, became an RN nurse, three, work three 12 hours days and four off and just live the simple. That's what he said. So just remember, if somebody's blessed, a big house just means bigger insurance, bigger house payments, more to clean. The big car means they're afraid a little scratch getting on there. If you drive a junk, it don't matter. So that helps with jealousy a lot. <laughs> Number four is, here's the fourth thing about jealousy and envy is love has power over jealousy. Love has power over jealousy. And this will be my last one tonight. And that is this, love envieth not. Remember that? 1 Corinthians 13 and 4. 1 Corinthians 13 and 4. Love envieth not. And I, you know, when I say the word love, that means you could really get, you start to feel what that person feels. And when you start doing that, you're just going, I'm glad they're blessed. I'm glad they're making it because life is a struggle for everybody anyway. And it, it's a short life. Let them, let them be blessed and all that kind of stuff. Okay. I'm going to stop.